YouTube, I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check it out. Hi there, YouTube, I'm back again today for another game review, another special Kickstarter review, and today I'm very excited to check out Rocky Road a la Mode from Green Couch Games. This is for two to four players, age is 10 plus, it'll take about 30 minutes to play, and in Rocky Road a la Mode, you will be taking control of an ice cream delivery man trying to sling out your ice cream to delightful little children in order to gain victory points and bonus modifiers. It's got a really interesting turn order mechanism and some other cool dual use cards. Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think about it. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Rocky Road a la mode. Before I get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me. Let's take everything you see here with the greatest salt. So first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule booklet, one page, double sided, and it's very well done aside from one big oversight that they need to uh, fix right here on the restock phase. I'll go over what that is when we get to that point. So in Rocky Road a la mode, you are going to be taking your ice cream van, which will also be denoted by this little pawn down here. You're going to be going around this track and you are going to be trying to satisfy hungry children by giving them the ice cream that they want. If you're able to satisfy those children, with the ice cream they want, then you will get uh, victory points and also permanent bonuses that you can turn around and use those permanent bonuses to satisfy whole areas. And if you satisfy the whole area, so for instance, if you had one of these, one of these, and one of these attached to the back of your, your ice cream van, then you're going to gain buco victory points. This is also a race aspect because as you can see, the first person to do an area is going to get more victory points than the second person who comes along and does it. Uh, last component I want to talk about are these guys right here. They're potholes, and for some peculiar reason, uh, there's ice cream there. Those are just wild ice creams that you can use to satisfy your hungry customers. I'm not going to go over exactly how these cards work right now because they're dual-use cards. I love dual-use cards, but they're a little bit confusing. They'll make more sense if we do it progressively through the, uh, the gameplay explanation. So first thing that you're going to do is you're going to start off with three cards in your hand and then you're going to be able to take one of three actions and I'll go over those three actions right now. The first action is called the restock phase and this is the one issue that I had with the rule booklet. It says draw up to five cards and move truck token equal an equal number of spaces. I wasn't sure if that meant that your maximum hand size was five cards or that you could potentially draw five cards from this pile over here. I'm assuming your maximum hand size is five cards. But anywho, it's very Ticket to Ride-esque style where you can either take one of these three cards right here or you can take a card off the top of the deck and it immediately replenishes. And that would be your entire turn, except that you also have to move yourself up that. So let's just say I only had one card in my hand and I drew four cards, one, two, three, four, five. Now I move my ice cream van up four spaces. So I'd go one, two, three, four. Four. And this is very important because the turn order is very unique in this game. Now the next action that you can take is you can attract customers to your ice cream van. What this means is you're going to take one of the cards that you have in your hand, we'll just say this card right here, and you are going to slide it underneath your ice cream van like so. Uh, you don't have to pay much this, but you do have to pay the time cost, which means that you've been driving around for one space, so you would move yourself ahead one space like that. And that would be the, your entire turn. Last thing that you can do is you can serve customers. This is where you're going to discard cards from your hand in order to satisfy the customers on your card. So for instance, you have to start with the top one. So starting with the top one, I would pay this card right here, and I would satisfy this customer. And that also causes me to move one space up on the road. And so now, uh, as you can see, I'm very close to completing this card. So what happens if I complete the card? We'll jump ahead a couple turns. Let's just say I complete this card. Uh, let's say I have a wild token for some reason. And I also have this right here. I could turn this in. I've successfully completed. I move ahead one space, obviously. And I'd also get to collect that. Now, this flips around so that this is a permanent bonus modifier that I have. I can use this one pink ice cream to satisfy this or this or that or anything. And also gets me one third of the way to here or one third of the way right there to collecting those bonuses. You can only get these bonuses if these are attached to the back of your truck. You can't just say, oh, I've got these three cards in my hand and discard them. They have to be attached to the back of your truck. Now. 
Let's talk about the big different thing in this game, and that is how the turn order works. It's not your typical game where player A goes, then player B, then player C, then player D. No, it's not like that. So I'm going to show you an example right here. So let's just say blue person goes first, and he draws three cards. One, two, three. The pink person decides to slide something else underneath his truck. And let's just say it costs one to do it. So, boom, he would go one space. Since he is still behind the blue ice cream van, he gets to take another turn. Let's just say he draws one card from this pile right here. He moves one space, and he's still behind the blue guy. So he still gets to take another turn. It's a very interesting um, uh, turn order placement where you're going to want to do some cool stuff on your turn, like maybe draw three or four cards here. But at the same time, it costs you potentially valuable time because other players are going to get turns before you get to come back to your turn. But anywho, you're going to go until someone gets to nine victory points, uh, either behind here or collecting these guys, at which point everyone else is going to get to catch up with them on the ice cream van. Uh, once everyone has passed, whoever has the most points at the end will be the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how Rocky Road a la mode is played. Alrighty then, Rocky Road a la mode from Green Couch Games coming to a Kickstarter you very, very soon. Pretty sure to post that Kickstarter link down below. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, it's a very light game. Uh, there's not too many choices you're going to be making on your turn, for instance. There's only three actions to take in the entire game, and the actions are relatively simple ones. Oh, I'm just going to slide these customers underneath my turn. Oh, I'm just going to draw two, three, four cards. And I forgot to mention that in the middle part, but it is very important. You have to mention how many cards you're going to draw before you start drawing your cards, an aspect that I do like about the game. Um, so the, the decision and what you're going to do in the game is very simple, which might be a turn off some people. Also, it's kind of repetitive. You're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. You're just going to be taking one of those three actions and just doing it repeatedly. Um, also, two to four players, <clears throat> very restricted player count. That's about all I got with this. Um, I really enjoyed Rocky Road a la mode, and in fact, I pretty much enjoyed, I think, everything I've played from Green Couch Games. They have this niche very well filled, these lighter weight filler, but with interesting decisions, great for a uh, gateway gate, or ga yeah, I guess it could be a gateway game, as simple as it is. It's a good gateway game, it's a good family game, it's a good game night, lightweight filler game. But there's some stuff, there's some real bite here, some really interesting decisions to make from time to time. First, I like the dual use cards. I like, when you first look at the card, you're just like, what in the world is going on with this card? And as you learn the game, you're like, oh, that's genius how they fit everything into this turn and how thematically everything actually kind of works, which is nice as well. Also, artwork, I mean, the artwork is outstanding. It's childish, cartoonish, but I love it. It fits the theme of the game, which is always a good thing. But my favorite aspect of this game, and it's hands down my favorite aspect of this game, is how the turn order system works. It's really interesting, really unique. It reminded me a little bit of um, Takenoko where you could do a lot of actions on your turn, a lot of small actions, and you might get to go like say two or three turns in a row if someone else does a really big action on their turn. Like maybe somebody wipes out their hand completely and then draws five new cards then that means, wow, I can do this action, I can do that action. You're going to be able to do a lot of little things or potentially a big thing on your turn, and I like that. Now, I wish there were a couple more actions, maybe just an added extra wrinkle in the game, but uh, that's a small complaint. Overall, Rocky Road Ala Mode really scratches the itch. Great game night filler game, great lightweight family game. Heck, it's even a gateway game in my personal opinion. So that is Rocky Road Alamo, that one that I definitely can recommend if you're in the market for a two to four player game. And oh yes, it plays good at all the player counts. I really enjoyed it. Me and my wife did at least at two players as well, if you're concerned about that. So if you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know ice cream trucks. What is the, what is your go to thing when you see the ice cream truck. Now, I used to be an ice cream driver when I was 20. I used to really enjoy the job. Um, but back then, I was trying to lose weight, so I ate a lot of bubblegum bars. They only had 90 calories in them. They tasted really good. So that was, but obviously me, for me personally now, I really love the, uh, what is it, uh, the tearjerker. They got the tearjerker giant bomb pops. It's like 11 inches long. Love those things. That's my favorite. But what is your favorite thing when you get the ice cream truck? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.